Hi friends, it's Monday the 24th of May. This is our last week of dailies. It's been such a pleasure to be with you all these months. Uh, but now all of this stuff is gearing up in the church and um, I'm, I'm not sure exactly what I'm gonna do yet. Maybe one a week. Uh, we're, we're talking about what to do in the future. And uh, so I've appreciated your uh, commitment and consistency. We are talking about the rung of truth in this Kiva, uh, the rung of truth taking us toward the light. And um, Stephen Charleston has been talking about his Native American tradition and how they govern themselves. And uh, so we're gonna start with some of his commentary today. As we have seen, traditional Native American culture was not much concerned with religious truth claims in a dogmatic sense. It was concerned with telling the truth on a personal level. The social contract formed by centuries of Native American civilization made telling the truth a core expectation for all human interactions. Speaking the truth was the highest virtue. Failure to do so was so egregious that it demanded the ultimate penalty in the political and judicial systems of our people. No, not death, but exile. This degree of insistence upon truth-telling arises in our Native American cultures because we understand that without it, none of the community systems on which we depend will work. Truth-telling is the one essential ingredient in all of them. It is the prerequisite for a stable society. And this is a, a post from Facebook that he put on Facebook. Say what you mean. Be honest in what you say and do. That alone could be your creed. Do no more than speak the truth to others as you acknowledge truth to yourself. See within your own motives as clearly as you see the intentions of others. Hear the truth within your own experience as much as you hear it from the world around you. Think with an open mind, believe with an open heart. Let light shine in the deepest sanctuary of your spirit. Say what you mean and mean what you say so that you may walk upright before the people, deserving their trust in every way. Deceive no one, especially yourself, for the honest path is the only way out of the forest. And this is his commentary. Today, from Native America's vantage point, tolerance of lies is the source of our dilemma. Once a culture allows truth to become relative or even meaningless, then the culture is in trouble. This is especially apparent in our political, judicial, and educational systems. Politics becomes the art of skillful lying. Education becomes the practice of telling ourselves what we want to hear. Justice becomes an exercise in power and privilege not true. The choice between truth and lies affects all social systems on which we depend, but it is most apparent in the political sphere. If people cannot believe their leaders are telling them the truth, then the whole structure of government collapses. Our anxiety, our fear of darkness, begins when we start to doubt what we see and hear. The Native American insistence on truth as a non-negotiable for all social interactions is not a stereotype of the noble savage perpetuated by Western colonialism. The Native American insistence on truth is a warning flag from a civilization that witnessed firsthand the cost of lies. And this is a Facebook post. Truth does not get lost. Do not turn away from what you know is right, no matter the cost, because what you value in the spirit is more precious than any power, anything money or power can buy. It is your integrity. Be wise and be alert, for the practice of integrity is not as easy as it sounds. Some people will believe whatever they hear. Others will hear only what they believe. Some will say anything to get what they want, and some want what you have no matter what you say. Some will deny what you can see so clearly for yourself. Some will distract you with the card trick of the truth. But remember, the truth does not get lost. It gets hidden. And his commentary, we're on the rung of truth here, obviously. 
The treaties made with our people were lies. The promises made to us were lies. The stories told about us were lies. The motives for taking our land were lies. The reasons for destroying our culture were lies. Few societies are as familiar with the full impact of lies as Native America. We are very experienced with the outcome of institutional lying, institutionalized lying. Therefore, this much we know for certain. Systems that do not pen, depend on the truth become corrupt, self-destructive, and eventually lethal. Climate change is a good example. Denial of the truth that human activity and choices are eroding the greatest system of all, Mother Earth, is already killing life on this planet on a huge scale. If the deception and misinformation continue, ecological breakdown will eventually reach a tipping point a point of no return. This is not some romantic Native American prophecy told by an exotic shaman about events in the far future. This is truth told by people who know the cost of lies. In the end, our main social systems are interconnected. The lies told in the political arena will impact the judicial system. They will reappear in the educational system and they will infect the healthcare system. <coughs> Excuse me. Permission to lie is cancer in the body of any social organism. Organism, The more visible that permission becomes, the more acceptable it becomes in all spheres of life. Over time, it will eat away at the entire structure of a civilization. It will consume hope in a darkness that cannot be penetrated by any light of truth. Telling the truth is not easy. It, is, it was not easy for my ancestors. It is not easy for us today. It requires a social contract that is based on much of what I've shared in this book, a spiritual commitment to something bigger than ourselves. It means taking the idea of community to the level of kinship, a bond of trust that cannot be broken. It means practicing what we preach. And this is a post from Facebook. Truth of the circle. The circle is our sign, ancient and universal. It is the sign of our faith, the image of what we see each day all around us. The circle is both the shape of life and of time. The great circle embraces every living thing, holding us together in kinship, protecting us, bringing us closer. The endless cycles of time carry us like a leaf on the stream, spiraling out, spiraling in, the motion of creation revealing. Within these circles, we find our place and meaning. We are all in the circle of life. We are all in the circle of time. No outsiders, no outcasts, no distinctions, no exceptions. We are all heirs of the same truth, the truth of the circle. We are the same. There's no special magic that made native people want to tell the truth. It is built into the systems that sustained American life. This is commentary now. It is a learned value. It can be learned again, and not by a few of us, but by all of us. We are more layered in a complex society in this historical moment than we may have been before, but the basic elements of honesty as a virtue are within all our cultures. Speaking the truth is enshrined in every world religion. It is an ideal to which we can all ascribe. Honesty, like hope, can become a focal point for our community's regeneration. Honesty, like hope, is something we all understand. It is something we can do together. Simply insisting on the truth is a first point of contact for us to begin building a new civilization. The truth about climate change would be a good place to start, but there are endless other places where the light we shine into the darkness is the truth we need to hear and to speak to one another. Truth will set us free. It will renew and unite us. It will ultimately heal us. On this rung of the ladder, so close to the light above us, the need for truth in our political culture becomes ever more apparent. The anxiety felt by the members of the New England parish I visited years ago mirrors the anxiety felt by millions of people across the country today, people like you and me, it is an understandable anxiety because it arises out of our experience with political systems that try to hide the truth with darkness.
power, the kind that subverts the truth and feeds fear with lies, breeds in darkness. To prevent this injustice, we must shine enough light on political systems to make them transparent. And this is his final post that went to Facebook for this chapter. Old Dreamers. One day we will look back, a couple of old pros, veterans of the holy wars and the endless struggles of the human heart, to find our meaning, to discern our purpose, to build our sanctuary while we work the fields. And by the dimming fires of time, we will talk long into the listening night and tell our stories of causes almost won, of visions bright and beautiful, of people we have known on our long journey home. One day we will look back, a couple of old dreamers, talking about the lives we lived, the truths we told, the paths we cleared so the ones we love can follow and find us here, waiting by the fire, wrapped in smoke and stories, the endless search of the human heart. Amen. One of my dreams for this church is to build a fire pit down in that big field, with the labyrinth of paths going to it where people could pray and walk on the paths and we could have community gatherings around the fire, worship. I think it would be pretty awesome. A place where we can tell the truth in, our, in smoke and stories, all to embrace the human heart in Christ. I think that'd be pretty awesome. Let's pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I hope you have a blessed Monday today thinking about truth as we are told in scripture, the truth shall set us free. Amen.